But you guys saw me, I am back again, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Let me ask you this, do you guys ever find yourselves in situations where the enemy's play style is completely throwing you off? You know, and you just don't know how to react in order to win. Well, soon enough, man, I'm telling you this, man, that won't ever be a problem again. Because in this video, we're gonna be going over the technique of playing correctly against every single type of player and play style. And so by the end of this video, you are going to know the ins and outs of every single play style that you come against and you know how they play and you know what they're most likely to do. And most importantly, how exactly you should counter them. Knowing the things that we're gonna ensure you is gonna provide you to be a better player altogether. So stick around. Make sure you watch the entire video. I'm really excited for you. You guys ready for this? Let's get this going. One of the most volatile players to come up against is the W Keer. Okay, so when you fight a W King player, things can go down here for you fast, so you must make sure that you make the right decisions at the right moments. You know, one of the key attributes that makes a W Keer so hard to fight is their aggression. Aggressive players tend to play extremely fast, with their main goal being to eliminate the enemy as quickly as possible, no matter the consequences. You know, bad W Keers usually don't really care if they take a ton of damage in their fights as long as they can get the elimination, whereas smart W Keers will play aggressively and try to to minimize the amount of damage that they take during the fight. And the only way to stop a W Keir from playing overly aggressive is to simply deal damage using counter peaks, making them less confident and most of the time forcing them to back off at least for a little while. So what is the best way to deal damage to a W Keir? Good question. First off, make sure that whenever you box up, always make two or three boxes rather than just one. You know, there are just multiple reasons to do this. Reason number one, it makes it harder for the W Keir to predict your location. They now have to figure out which box you are actually inside of for them to push you effectively. Since they don't know your location as easily, this can mean that you can peek and, you know, take a shot at them without them predicting it before you. Reason number two, having more than one box creates more angles. More angles to shoot from and edit from, and most importantly, more angles for you to save peace control from. You're gonna see this all the time in pro-level gameplay, man. When they box up, they almost always will rebox to create more space for them to work with. Secondly, when you're fighting an aggressive W Keir, you're most likely going to be constantly, you know, backing up away from the enemy because of how fast they like to rush you. This means you need to get good at keeping opponents away at a distance. And the best way to keep a safe distance from a W Keir is to constantly switch over across the grid tiles. If you're not sure what, what a grid tile is, it's pretty much a square grid pattern that all the builds on the map have to abide by and have to be placed along. So if you're holding a wall and the W key is trying to take or break, you know, through it, you know, you can always just mirror the opponent's movement and just swap boxes with them and just go across the grid line. And this is going to make it a lot harder for them to eliminate you since it pretty much guarantees that a wall is always going to be in between you and your opponent as long as you're good at, you know, replacing walls consistently. In addition to constantly switching through the grid tiles, another way to keep a safe distance from W keyers when they are chasing you down is to change the level that you're on every now and then. Even if you need to rebox, just try dropping down one or two levels. Doing this makes it harder to track you down and just really keep you in the line of sight. Also, make sure that you always place a corner inside your boxes to prevent enemy peace control. And as always, lots of successful W keys often have zero ping. So, if you're not rocking an ethernet cable in your setup, your ability to fight you know, back against those zero ping warriors is going to be restricted. In conclusion, when fighting W keys, the two main things to keep in mind is keeping your distance to ensure a safe disengagement if needed. And two, when you're boxing up to heal or do whatever, like always make more than one box. And real quick, we're excited to announce a brand new Pro Guys free trial subscription. You get a free coaching session when you sign up as well and get access to hundreds of lessons by top pros in every game that you can think of. You don't want to miss this, man. Take advantage of this right now for three days. And if you love Pro Guys, sign up for more. Use the link down below to get started and enjoy your free three days. All right, so the second type of player that you should learn to counter is that, you know, is what we term the waiters. So in other words, the players that like to move when you do, like playing passively until they find the chance to strike back. And so while this is definitely a smart play style, it is also super annoying to come against, especially during box fight scenarios. It's important to know, man, like this is not the same as the camper play style, since a camper is usually scared to make a move no matter the situation and will hide in their boxes for as long as they can. One of the plays that this type of player will try 
try to make is, you know, they're gonna box up in metal or brick and just wait. The second that you try to pickaxe at the wall, they're gonna edit, box you up, and hit a 200 pump. You know, they wait and react to what you do. They usually avoid W King unless they absolutely have to. So some of the best ways to go about these types of situations are to establish peace control and just, you know, just establish it around you before you go for the pickaxe. This is gonna make it so that even if the enemy does predict your pickaxe swing and edit just at the right time, you can edit either a cone or a ramp in front of you to stop them from hitting a pump shot. And since all the walls around you are already yours, you don't have to worry about getting trapped or peace controlled. Okay guys, so another thing that you need to get better at when fighting these types of players or anybody in general is being more unpredictable. You know, if you're doing things that are just too generic and just easy to predict, you're going to take a lot of damage rather than, you know, if you were just to do things most players wouldn't even think of. You know, just think outside the box. So if you know a player is inside of a box, you know, one thing that you can try is pickaxing two different walls to one shot. And so this exposes the players inside the box and forces them to predict which wall that you're going to replace first. And it makes it easier for you to gain peace control. This is just one example of being more unpredictable, which can be implemented into your game style. Low ground warriors are some of the most unexpectedly skilled players in the game, and for a good reason as well. Playing from low ground seemingly has more negatives than positives, but that doesn't stop some pros from mastering the ability to play skillfully from below. You know, one trait which all low ground pros have in common is an amazing movement and positioning awareness. So if you're able to put a stop to their good positioning and force them to tough positions, like you're gonna be more likely to counter their play style and just get a free elimination. All right guys, so one way to counter low ground warriors is to stop yourself from over peaking. Over peaking is what most low ground warriors need to deal damage. They often look straight up at height and just shoot any players who over peak with a shotgun. So next time that you're on height and you know somebody's below you and they're looking for an easy shot, just make sure to place one more cone around you and just protect yourself from side jump shotgun shots. On top of that, you should always try to double floor cone areas where you think a low ground warrior is going to move to. And so if you manage to do this and you predict their movement, I mean, you can just edit those place builds and get a free shot on them. Okay, so one way to counter their amazing movement is to keep a safe distance and make sure you stay aware of peace control. Similar to W Kears, if you keep a fair distance, they won't be able to to use their movement to confuse you and you can stay ahead of the situation. Okay, on the other hand, high ground warriors are also some of the most mechanically gifted players in the game. Using their amazing AR aim to keep players below them, high ground warriors win their games by constantly pressuring whoever is underneath using AR and SMG spraying. All right, so how do you counter them? Good question. First off, you need to get good at safely using launch pads during late games. If you use a launch pad incorrectly and pull your glider out too high, you're gonna be an easy target for anybody on height to knock you out of the sky. Practice looking out for the lowest point on the map and dropping for those points. For example, a river or just a general low point, always try to avoid pulling your glider out on top of mountains. And this is gonna ensure the least amount of air time and prevent getting beamed out of the sky. Also, when you're gliding through the air late game, all right, never land on top of high ground players unless they're distracted. If they know that you're coming to land on them, whew, they have all the advantages, and landing on them will almost always get you eliminated. On the other hand, if they are distracted, that could be an easy opportunity to take the high ground on them and gain an advantage. You know, it's all about distinguishing whether they are aware of you or not. All right, the second way to counter high ground warriors is to always look for opportunities to knock them down. Keep checking to see whether their builds are, you know, are supported, and if they're not, you can just knock them down and retake height over them. In conclusion, my friends, all high ground warriors maintain advantage, you know, simply because, you know, from the fact that they have a high ground. And so if you're able to take that away from them, I mean, they lost all the power over you and that's the best way to counter them. All right, but you guys me, let's do a recap. Whenever you box up while running from a W keyer, all right, always make sure to create two or three boxes rather than just one. This is gonna create more space and angles to really work with and make the W keyer just more open to counter peaks, peace control, and all sorts of stuff. It also makes it harder for them to predict your location. All right, try to keep your W keyers away or at a distance using the grid tiles to really create more walls in between you and your opponent. Another way to keep a safe distance is to change your level. Confuse the enemy, just make them impatient. All right, quick tip. If you don't already, buy yourself an ethernet cable, please. This is gonna ensure less ping variation. All right, when pickaxing a player's wall who has a passive, aggressive, you know, waiting play style, always remember to secure peace control around you before going for a pickaxe. This prevents you from getting boxed up when they edit the wall. Always try to be less predictable, guys, especially 
you know, deep in your games, you know, little random switch ups can really throw off an enemy and really get you an easier elimination. Never over peak during your games. Or low ground warriors, they're gonna literally be there to eat you up. All right, become more confident with using launch pads late game. And this is going to make getting beamed out of the sky less likely. Always look for opportunities to knock down high ground warriors off height during late games. And remember that the high ground warriors main advantage is literally the fact that they're on the high ground. Woo! That was it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this and learned some things about all these play styles out here, man. I'm telling you, you apply these tips, you're going to be successful. So keep going. Listen, if you don't succeed at first, keep trying and keep trying again. Practice makes perfect. If you guys liked the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and listen, I'm telling you right now, connect with my Instagram at your motivation guy. I believe in you. I really, really do. I say it in every single video and I'm never going to stop until you believe it and until you know it so you can keep running after your dreams and you never stop just because struggles come and walls come and you know things come up against you if you're having a bad day or having a bad week listen we're all human i get it but get back up and keep going after your dreams okay you're gonna make it you're gonna make it don't give up i'll see you next on the next one peace